Hello folks and welcome back to the electronics lab today. We have something uh, potentially interesting to show you, well at least the first of something interesting. It may not be interesting to most people but to a select few. Okay, that makes me pretty sad but anyway, let's go have a look. Ooh, what is this I hear you say? Well, for the uninitiated, that is the output of a resolver to, to digital converter. So we'll see on the bottom here we get the index pulse every time the motor completes one rotation and we get the two um, pulse trains then from the incremental encoder emulation. Now that's all very nice I hear you say but where is it actually coming from? Let's have a look. And where it is coming from is here. And this is our trusty BMW i3 motor and it is spinning. And we're using our analog discovery here to record the output from the resolver to digital converter. We're uh, running a hacked up version of Paul Holmes' um, design here for the AD2S uh, 1210 analog devices resolver to digital converter chip. Uh, we have our three phase wires hooked up here at the back. You can probably see if I can get you in there. Probably see the res resolver. Uh, rotating around merrily. Um, so this is a real mess job here now uh, but what we're looking at is the BMW i3 inverter or as they call it the EME the electrical machine electronics and what we have to have done here is we have removed the uh, brains, the BMW brains, which is this hugely complicated PCB. Uh, we've basically dumped that. Uh, we've reverse engineered the inputs to the BMW IGBT driver board and current sensors and shutdowns and all that kind of thing. I've made this horrific little adapter header here to plug into the uh, connector. And that's connected to one of my um, kind of old school um, Hubner inverter boards. And I've got a brace of power supplies here. Um, the BMW IGBT driver requires a 32 volt power supply. Uh, we've got about 31 there at the minute on the power supply as well as a 5 volt supply for the logic and the... Um, current sensors. Uh, so we've got that kind of just bodged in there onto the uh, system here. I have a USB lead uh, coming across from this. I've actually got two USB leads coming across with a computer and I'm just running some uh, manual parameters here um, on the Hubner interface. Uh, it's an old software version, but for the purposes of just turning a motor like this, it doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, that's very nice pulse train we're getting there. So what I'm going to do, we're running at 5 hertz here at the minute. Um, camera work, shoddy. So this is a permanent magnet motor of some sort, but it's kind of strange because it spins by hand very much like an induction motor. I can't detect any cogging in it. Um, wow, what was that? Oh, let's not worry about what that could have possibly been. Um, weird. Anyway, crazy stuff. As I was saying, 
Um, it doesn't cog. You know, I can spin it by hand. Um, no real problems that way. Um, power supply hasn't blown up. That's good. And yeah, it, it just it, it seems to spin open loop reasonably easily. You kind of have to catch it, but once it gets it gets turning, then um, we'll be uh, you know we'll be fine. So what I want to try and do here, I'm going to bring you guys over to the motor actually here. I'm going to try and increase to 10 hertz. Let me see if you guys can see that there. I'm hoping you can. So I'm going to have to do it easily. The first thing I'm going to have to do is to bring up amp nom few little stages here and then bring my frequency up gradually there's six hertz seven hertz going to increase amp nom again you can see the pulse train is speeding up here from the the uh, resolver output there's eight hertz going to increase amp nom 9 hertz. And 10 hertz. Okay, so that's us rolling along at 10 hertz now. Uh, there's no detectable current draw from the power supply, at least on the, the analog meter. Uh, so we're kind of motoring away there now. Uh, I'm hoping you're able to see that. Uh, so yeah, there we see our pulse train from the resolver output is resolving itself. Um, so yeah, that's about it guys. Uh, we've got the i3 motor spinning, uh, currently with the Hoogner board, so I think we're probably good enough at this stage to start laying down the groundwork for a logic board to run this thing. At this point, I'm not going to be making that design open source, uh, just for the reasons I, I outlined in a previous video. But we'll see where it all leads. Um, one, one other thing. Woohoo! Power failure. And perfect timing, as I was just about to show you my uh, Lebowski brain board. But, oh, it's back. Why does it always do this to me? You know, why can it not just go out? That would be brilliant. Then I could run from battery power and tell the world how fantastic I am. But anyway, as I was saying, I've started uh, messing about with the Lebowski brain board. This is actually Arlen Sandsmore's design. So I've been getting to grips with that as well. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna try to use this to run the BMW motor, maybe. Um, silly computer. So, anyhow, uh, yeah, you've got a little bit of drama in the middle of that. Uh, the snow is thumping down here at the minute, so, you know, go for go figure. Uh, we will see you, you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check those links in the description for Patreon uh, donations and GitHub for downloading all the open source uh, material. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys next time and happy BMW driving.